Alright, so this next video is a short video about how to build a truss arch. Now, this truss arch is going to be a mini version of what we'd actually build because we'd try and get it up above our heads. But basically, we're going to grab our base plates, which are on either end of the truss arch. They're a nice big footprint base plate, nice and, nice and heavy, um, that really anchors the truss arch. We've got our sections of truss that go up to a corner, across our, our truss length, and then down to another corner, and then down to the other base plate. Uh, the purpose of this is to get things up and above, to hang lighting on it, to hang speakers on it. Um, the main thing I want you to be watching out for in this video is that we've got our spigots, our pins and our clips that join all that truss together. Um, now there's a specific way these pins and clips go in, so just pay some, pay some attention to the detail of how that all joins together. So it's all nice and solid and nice and permanent, so no one's going to get hurt in the process. All right, so we're gonna build a truss rigging system for the purposes of demonstrating how to hang some lights. Now, in a real event situation, you could hang televisions on this, you could hang speakers on it, you could hang uh, video screens on it if you like. Whatever you need to hang, you build these truss arches to a certain dimension of what you need. But like I say, for the purpose of this training, we're gonna hang a few lights on it later. So we're just gonna build a one meter up and a, a four meter across truss arch. So to build this truss arch, we need two base plates and the pins and clips and spigots inside that to join to the, to the base section of the truss. Then we've got two upright pieces of truss that go to two truss cubes, which create the corners. And then we've got our two two meter bits of truss that join together to create the horizontal or the rigging part of the, the truss arch where we hang our lights vertically from there. Now, obviously this, this truss arch is not tall enough in its current state to actually be used for a real gig but for the purpose of this training video it'll explain how to build one of these trusses on a job sense all we're going to be doing is extending the leg to three or four meters and we're going to be widening the truss arch uh, to five or six meters to make sure that it's nice and big so i've laid out all my equipment and you'll notice that I've been joining together all the pieces of equipment. So I've joined together a straight run of truss with the two cubes on it. And I'm going to join the two vertical legs to the base plates so that me and my colleague in a minute will land that truss on top. The pins will be aligned properly because the spigots will be aligned in the truss cube already. So we'll be able to just put all the pins, bang them through with a hammer and then put the clips on and then our truss arch is built. Then in a minute we'll get in close and we'll have a look at exactly what I mean by pins, clips and spigots. So we're going to roughly get that those two uprights of that truss arch together, lift it on together, team lifting, communicating, using our knees, land it on. And then we both go to work with our hammers, pins and clips. We put all our pins in, we bang them in with a hammer, we put the clips in to stop those pins falling out and then we double check that whole truss to make sure everything's good. So here's a close up of joining one piece of truss to another. So you see in my hand I've got a spigot, it's like an egg we call it sometimes, and then we've got the pin. Now the pin's a tapered pin and it has to go through the big side of the hole on that spigot otherwise it'll get wedged so see i've just used my hand to tap that in that's because it's designed that way that the tapered pin will go in nice and firm and then we may just need to reinforce that pin in with a hammer so we're going to load one end of the truss with four spigots and then we're going to put our four pins and four clips in the side of the truss that holds that spigot in which will then allow the other piece of truss to marry to the piece of truss with the spigots in it to then put the four more pins and clips in so that then we have a solid firm join in our global truss rigging system. So I'm making sure that every pin is in the right way and that the clip is in the pin to stop the pin falling out. And because my spigots are in the one end of the truss, they're, they're going to be definitely aligned 
to suit the next piece of truss that we're marrying to. There we go, putting a pin in, giving it a tap with the hammer or a good hit. We don't want to hit too many times to create a whole bunch of noise. We just want to give it one firm hit. Another thing we want to be aware of with our clips is that they're all going downwards so that the open end is towards the ground. And the reason for that is that if we had the open end towards the sky or the ceiling, it could possibly fall off and fall on someone. And if we're talking about an event or a dinner or something like that, it could fall on a table or fall on somebody's you know, head. may not cause a lot of serious injury, but it's not something we want to be done. And we definitely don't want any of these clips to be out for the show because it's part of the rigging system. It's part of the quality control to make sure everything is as solid as possible. So we've got our base plate here and I'm really making sure that the big holes are on the outside of that half spigot that's screwed into the base plate there. And then we have to make sure, and you'll see right there, I'm just showing you how much of the pin goes in if the small side's in there. So it doesn't go through as much. So we really need to make sure that most of that pin goes through. And then if it's, if it's on the side, then it won't go through at all. So we've got to make sure it's aligned up in that diagonal position to each other. So the two diagonal spigots, the big holes on the outside of each spigot, and they're aligned up in that axis so that when we land our truss over and land it vertically on top of these spigots, that there's a good amount of daylight so that all those pins will go in nice and easy with a little tap of a hammer to then get the clips in. We also want to make sure that on this pin that the, the hole where the clip through is going sideways or horizontal according to the base plate. So that clip goes through nice and easy horizontally like that. If we put that little hole at the end of the pin in a vertical sense, it becomes a little bit hard to put that clip in. giving it a good tap, making sure their pins are through enough. All right, so if we were to pack down this piece of truss, we want to see here that the, the base plate has its pins and clips in it already. And same deal when we pack down the, the cube that we put the pins and clips back in that. And this is to make sure that the next time we join a piece of truss to it, we've definitely got our pins and clips. And you'll see a pile of four of the spigots there. So what I've chosen to do here is to take the spigots completely out of the truss and put the pins and clips back in it so that next time on the job, I can grab four of those spigots and know that the pins and clips are attached to it. And it's a quick little process to start building that job on the show because we're really trying to save time on a job. Whereas if I had to rummage through that tin and find four spigots, then four pins at the bottom, then four clips, then I'd be probably taking five to 10 minutes per join as opposed to one minute where I just grab my four spigots that are fully loaded with pins and clips and take it to my join of truss, drop it down, come along and join that truss together. You can choose to store the truss with the pins, clips and spigots in it and in the other end, but that's up to your, your manager or up to the company you work for.